Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Tawal Mehta. And today we will understand how to plot ROC curve in logistic regression in NIME. So we use logistic regression when we are having one categorical dependent variable and there can be many independent variables. This independent variables can be on continuous or categorical scale, but it is necessary that the dependent variable should be in the categorical scale. For example, patient having the heart disease or not having the heart disease. After we run the logistic regression, it generates a confusion matrix where we, are able, where we want to see how much is our classification accuracy. Let's try to understand the confusion matrix with a small example. A patient is having a COVID or normal and we are having COVID kit to, put, to predict that a patient is having a COVID or not. So our success is that the patient is having a COVID and the kit also predicted it. So 50 are such cases where our prediction accuracy, where our prediction is correct. Similarly, a patient was normal and the COVID kit also det detected that uh, a person is normal. So there are 114 such cases where the prediction is accurate. There can be a misclassification where a person is normal but COVID kit detects that he or she is having a COVID. So six are such misclassified cases. There can be another scenario also that a patient is having a COVID and the kit detects it as or rather it predicts it as normal. So 22 again misclassified cases are there. Based on this we, we will name this. If our prediction is correct, positive to positive. It means that it is true positive. This is our success. Negative to negative, it is true negative. This is also success. But positive, a person is COVID positive and the kid detected in negative, that is an error. A person is COVID negative and the kid detected it is positive. This is also an error. So false positive, type 1 error and this is type 2 error. Based on this, there are some statistics which are generated such as sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, precision. I'll request all my viewers to kindly refer the previous video to understand the interpretation of these statistics. Let's take a very small example. We are having true positive 2894 and true negative 11750. The false positive is 643 and false negative is 994. What is our classification accuracy? It is the summation of our green cells, these green cells, divided by the total number of observations. So 2894 plus 11750, 2894 plus 11750, divided by 16281, which is the summation of all these four cells. So it is 0.899. So our classification accuracy is approximately 90%. Now what is our in interpretation of area under the curve? The accuracy of any test depends on how well the test separates the group being tested into those with and without the disease in the question. Accuracy is measured by the area under the ROC curve. An area of 1 represents a perfect test. An area of point represents a worthless test. There is a very rough guide which we should understand. So if you get area under the curve in the range of 0.9 to 1, it is excellent. 0.80 to 0.90, good. 0.70 to 0.80 fair, 0.60 to 0.70 poor, 0.50 to 0.60 uh, it's fail. The model is not working properly. Then the nine will also generate the receiving operating characteristics curve, ROC curve. So a receiving operating characteristics curve is a graphical representation of the performance of binary classifier system, such as logistic regression, as, as its discrimination threshold is varied. The ROC curve plots the true positive rate against the false positive rates at various threshold settings. True positive rate against the false positive rate. Let's, let, let's go a little bit. True positive rate with false positive rate. Since to compare two different models, it is often more convenient to have a single metric rather than several ones. We compute two metrics from the confusion matrix, which, will, which we will later which we will combine later on. The resulting curve is ROC curve and the metric we consider is the AOC of this curve which is called AUROC. 
The ROC curve shows a well how well a model can distinguish between two classes that is a positive and negative by varying the probability thresholds for predicting the positive class. Sensitivity, the true positive rate is a proportion of correctly, correctly classified positive instances among all positive instances and specificity is the proportion of correctly classified negative instances among all negative instances. Let us go back. We are talking about sensitivity and specificity. What it is? Sensitivity is true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. This and this. Specificity is true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. So our ROC curve will be generated on, the, on this basis. ROC curve will illustrate the trade-off between sensitivity and specificity. A classifier that randomly guesses a class would result in a diagonal line from the top bottom left to the top, top right. See this. The dark line which you can see, it's 50-50. We are, uh, the model is not at all working or rather it's a guesswork. We want that our model should go beyond this uh, diagonal line. You can see the blue lines and red lines so that we can say that it is able to classify the classes properly. Okay. A perfect classifier would have a ROC curve that goes up the y-axis and the straight across the x-axis. Now this is a very idealistic situation. It should go straight like this and like this. It is an idealistic situation where we are able to classify the cases 100%, which is not possible. Area under the curve is a measure of overall performance of the classifier, which ranges from 0.5 to 1. The higher the AOC, the better is a classifier at distinguishing between the two classes. The ROC curve can help to determine the optimal threshold for making predictions based on classifier's goal. That is, either you want to maximize sensitivity, specificity, or accuracy. The, th the chosen threshold will depend on the cost and benefits associated with different classif classification outcomes. So you can see here, we have used two models, the blue one and the red one. Of course, the red one model is better in comparison to the blue one because it is moving to the optimal to the idealistic situation that is uh, that is the ideal situation is that the line should be the y-axis line and the x-axis line it is an idealistic situation so if your if your curve moves nearer to it it means that the classification accuracy is good now let us see how we will run this in NIME Analytics platform. So first of all, I will have to in, uh, import the data using input output. I'll activate the CSV reader from here. I've activated the CSV node as my file is in CSV format. I'll double click on it and browse the data set. Part one, press open, click OK, right click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and see the file table. So the variables which are there in this data set are age, gender, chest pain type, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, fasting blood sugar, resting ECG, maximum hours of exercise, exercise angina, old pig, straight slope and heart disease. Now you can see here that our target variable is a heart disease which we want to classify on the basis of age, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, and maximum hours of exercise. So they all are on different scales. It is necessary that we normalize them. So I'll activate the normalizer node from here. Double click on it. Now again, right click on it and configure. So I'll remove old pick and fasting blood sugar from here. There are three types of normalization, mean max normalization, z-score normalization, and normalization by decimal scaling. I'll request all my viewers to kindly refer the previous video where we have already used this uh, normalizers. Click OK. Right click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and you can see the normalized table. 
So age, resting blood pressure, cholesterol, maximum hours of exercise have been normalized. Now based on this, we want to create the model. So first of all, we will do the partitioning of the data. Activate the partition where the data will be split into 80, 20. Configure. Make it 80. Click OK. Right click on it and execute. So the data has been divided into two parts. The first partition will be used for the training purpose. And the second partition, which is 20% 20 20 of the data set, will be used for testing purpose. Okay. Now let's activate the logistic learner from here. Then right click on it. Right click on it, configure. So we want to classify the heart disease, yes and or no. So we, are, we will make the reference category as no. I'll transfer all other variables here and only include those variables which have been normalized. Age, then cholesterol, resting blood pressure, and maximum hours of exercise. Click OK. Right click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and click on coefficient and statistics. We have already understood the interpretation of this. Kindly refer my previous video where the interpretation of this logistic regression was done in quite detailed way. Okay, based on this, I will activate logistic regression predictor. Disconnect this. Now see, 80% of the data set was used for the learning purpose. A 20% data set will be used for testing purpose. From where this node will do its learning? From its previous node. Right click on it and configure. So custom prediction column you have to activate. Yes, because we want to generate the prediction heart disease. Append the columns with the predicted probable probabilities. Click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and see the predicted table. So you can see here the heart disease uh, and the prediction no and yes, right? Both the predictions we are having. Now, how well the model is working for this, I'll activate the scorer from here. Right click on it, configure. So prediction of the heart disease, uh, keep here heart disease and prediction of the heart disease, click OK, right click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and you can see the confusion matrix which we have generated. So it's just like the example which we have discussed, a person is having the COVID and the kit detected it or not. Let's try to understand. 73 are such cases where a person was having the heart disease and our logistic regression model predicted based on these variables that yes, these are, the, these are the variables influencing the heart disease. So 73 are the correctly classified cases. 50. In 50 cases, the person was not having the heart disease and our model also worked appropriately. But 34 and 27, they are misclassified cases or in other words, they are type 1 and type 2 error. It's also known as a leakage in our model. Now, let's try to see how well it performs on our ROC curve. Okay, again, right click on it and see the accuracy statistics. So our accuracy statistics is 0.668, which is quite low. To understand all this, uh, statistics like recall, precision, sensitivity, kindly refer my previous videos where we, I have discussed in detail. Now, let's go in ROC curve. Activate it, disconnect from here, disconnect from here, and connect the node with here. Right click on it and configure. Now, activate the hard disease here and prediction, yes. Remove all other variables and only include the prediction hard disease, yes. 
So we want to see that how, uh, what is the performance of our logistic regression model in classification. So for heart disease, yes, and the prediction heart disease, yes. So the original data is compared with the predicted data. Then click on general plot options. Make sure that you click on create image and output. Click OK. Right click on it and execute. Again, right click on it and see the image. So you can see the image which has been generated. So the area under the curve is 0.762. Again, right click on it. And you can see it is giving me the statistics 0.762. Let's do the interpretation. I'll make this as 0.762. So if you want, you can write this interpretation 762. An AOC value of 0.762 in an ROC curve indicates that the logistic regression model has a moderate level of discriminative power in distribution between the positive and negative classes. The AOC ranges from 0 to 1 with higher values indicating the better performance. An AOC, AOC of 0.5 represents the random guesswork, while an AOC of 1 indicates a perfect classifier that perfectly separates the two classes. Or in other words, the idealistic situation which we are talking about when the when your this line the model line is is aligned with the y axis and x axis i'll do the correction here also the 0.762 an aoc of 0.762 suggests that the model has some ability to correctly classify positive instances as positive and negative instances as negative but there is still room for improvement. In other words, the model's predictions are better than random chance, but there may be some misclassification or overlap between the two classes. So this is all about how to run ROC curve in logistic regression. For more videos online, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. Please refer my playlist in which I already uploaded many videos on 9.